Okay. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a very merry classic TV holiday event. Yay! A very merry marathon classic TV holiday event. Okay, our next two guests are icons of daytime television, entertainment, and beyond. In the world of afternoon, she is known uh, as Liz Chandler on Days of Our Lives. She has also appeared on classic TV shows like The Carol Burnett Show, The New Mike Cammer, Fantasy Island, and more, a multi-talented artist. She is also a singer and composer who has co-written two of the most popular TV themes ever heard, the themes for different strokes and the facts of life. Into this mix, she is a respected author and motivational speaker. Before he graced the screen of daytime serials such as Days of Our Lives, General Hospital, and Santa Barbara, he starred in the revival of Mission Impossible and made guest appearances on iconic shows like Heart to Heart, Kojak, Police Woman, and so many others. He too is an author, and he will tell us about his new book. Please welcome Gloria Loring and Theo Fanglitz. Daytime Legends. Let's have a nice hand for Gloria and Tao here. You're on. Hello, hello. You're good. Better, better it's mic way better. That's why I bring it. Yeah. Okay. Have mic will travel. I, I like so, that. So you guys worked together on Days of Our Lives, no, correct? We played together. Oh, okay. you played together on Days of Our Lives. Our birthdays are uh, my birthday is December tenth. This is the fifteenth. Two Sagittarius. Is, oh my God, was there a lot of fire? <laughs> <laughs> wow. We, we had so much fun. Yes. Do you remember the Do you remember the time Do you remember the time I flashed you? Oh. Oh, it's a family show. Not this is family nowhere Christmas nowhere story. to be read. Oh yeah, family Christmas story. I, I had brought my. I, I, I had a fur coat at the time, and I brought my fur coat in because Liz was supposed to be very wealthy, and I thought it would be cool because they didn't have the budget to do that. So I brought this fur coat in, and who was it who was my conspiratorial ally in that? Some one of the other girls, and they had a place where you go and take a shower, and I'd taken a shower and I'd gone back to my room, and I think we were sharing the dressing room, and the fur was hanging up there. And she said, we should just do something fun. And I went, I know what we're going to do. And I had nothing on, and I put the fur coat. And we went, and she opened the door, and I went, woohoo! Just like that, literally. And Taya went, like this, and that was it. No one has ever done that to me. <laughs> it's the only time I've ever done that in my whole life. But it was literally, woohoo! Like that. No, no. No, no. <laughs> it, yes, it's it's what really it's happened stole. to you. No, it did not oh, stall. No. It stole. But I must say, she was beautiful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bravo. 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 Yes, she, Bravo. Now you just celebrated. A gentleman always. You just celebrated the 50th anniversary of Days of Our Lives. Is that yes, true? There was and a big we were gala? there. I got to see him. And what, yes. Tell us what that was like, Tao. Here, use this mic if it's there. Okay. There um, we go. Well, you know, there's not many people can say that we've been no. something 50 no. years. Here, try no. this one. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a Three like Stooges episode right here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, except we know our lines. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, it was a, a fantastic thing because, you know, there's not too many of us who can say that being with a show that's lasted this long. and um, 50 I've, years. Yeah, and I've been on and off the show for uh, 34 years. I've died six times. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. I was, no, I was married to four people in six years. I was on there for six and a half years. I had four marriages during that time. It's like, God, I was a busy girl. But I think it's something to be proud of. I think uh, for all of us who have survived this long in, in the business of Hollywood, that uh, never lets anything last too long after one season uh, gone, and they brought something else in. You don't even remember what was before that. But with last, at least with us, it's a company that is played together. It's a rep company, really. Uh, we were married, weren't we? I can't remember. Yes, we were, you rascal. You came ah. back. <laughs> I was actually married, and you came back. Well, you, the writers. Right. The writer Sherry made us, one of the writers is here. You came back. I'd been on the show, and I got married to Don Craig, I think it was, wasn't it? And you came back. All of a sudden, this guy shows up, and they wrote this thing in where my divorce never became final, and I'm still married to him. And I didn't want to be, and I was like, why did he want me? But for some unknown reason, he wanted to, he still wanted the marriage. I think it was just pride. 
Just mail it. That's all it was. I suppose it's being Greek, but I remember. <laughs> I remember. I had a possession. I had a rape scene. Yes, you did. No, I, I had a rape scene. Okay. But you were. You I know. didn't do it very well. Uh, <laughs> Thank God. My, my <laughs> dad, I, I mean, I even wore leather pads to, you know, to emphasize it. <laughs> but I, my back went out. <laughs> it wasn't exactly no, but we one did, of my but we did do the, No, it was, it was awful. I went home and stood in the shower and cried for four Aww. minutes. I just sobbed and sobbed Wait, and sobbed why and sobbed. Were you crying? Because, because he, we had this scene where he was supposed to rape me. And he, he was raping me. On, yes, oh yes. No, it was me. And Happy holiday. <laughs> 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 anyway. We'll so get to the life of frothy stuff this later. You have a couple of, of new it's books out. It's a soap out. opera. Come on. So why don't we? Why don't you tell us about your books, Dan? Uh, this one came out last year. Uh, one of the things that I remember so well. You have my mic, and I have his mic. <laughs> oh, that's the four thousand dollar mic, right? Okay. Can you hear me? There you go. Yeah. Uh, these are my stories from the Middle East. I mean, when you think about what's going on today, I, I'm surprised they even survived. Uh, even though I came close to death a number of times. Um, but the stories are interesting because it, they also deal with the history, and it was <coughs> days of our lives that just helped me face all these journeys. So I decided I was going to do the show for Discovery Channel. Two weeks before we were supposed to start, they canceled. So and so I ended up doing all those stories in this book. And So uh, that's the first book? Yes, it starts, it starts really from coming from Australia, my family's Greek heritage, and uh, how I went to Egypt 10 times, and I went to Georgia, and then to Syria, right before I caught on fire. So it, it was very dangerous. I was you know, uh, followed all the time by secret police, and uh, they tried to trap you many times, because uh, with us Euro uh, Americans, when we go over, they think that we have a lot of money to spend, so what they end up doing to us is, is arresting us, and then taking $15,000 is, is the going rate. Anyway, that book uh, I'm very proud of because I'm it, not going there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it, it is a journey that, in many ways, I take you with me. So I go to Greece, I go to Italy, I go to uh, Israel, which I love at Christmas. I went to Jordan, um, and then the other book, which just came out two weeks ago. Um, you know, food for me is uh, is a seduction. <laughs> I think of it when, when you walk into someone's house, you always know if they've cooked the food because you can smell. When, they, when you walk into a house and you're going for dinner and you can't smell anything, you're thinking, hmm, someone didn't do this recipe. <laughs> and so there's no seduction. So I always thought of food as being seductive. Uh, the ambiance of it. A holly jolly <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Why, Christmas could be seductive. <laughs> Anyway, so what I did was I cooked for many people over the years, um, and uh, so I told the stories of seducing celebrities one meal at a time. Yeah, <laughs> love it. So uh, you never invited me. <laughs> I think you, you guys. Yeah, you guys moments. have it all covered. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sad. I was no. happy. I'll, oh, I'll invite you anytime you want. All but right. who? Where are you? Well, who knows where you are? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I went all the way to Australia to see her, so it's not like I haven't tried to see her. I have, because she was one of my I did favorite. concert tours. But anyway, I hadn't finished. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the one story here that I just, because she's an icon, was uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. And I spent an hour having tea with her. Oh, wow. She, I was studying sure. Chinese art in New York, and she came into the gallery. Um, some people say that she came in because I'm Greek, and three weeks later she married Onassis. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I had tea with that uh, with that wonderful woman, and and uh, she was um, she was so in, in inquisitive. She was so interested. Um, she wanted to know about my. I'm telling her about the Chinese heritage. What, what year is this? This 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 is back <laughs> back <laughs> and ni 1968. Wow. Oh my God. And uh, she was absolutely, I, I just loved it. She walked in and, and I couldn't believe it because um, who was the actress from, uh, it happened one night? Claudia Colbert. Claudia Colbert. Claudia Colbert had just come in. And, and I, she said to me, I want you to come and have lunch with us. And my boss said, no, leave him here. And so I was sulking. So I was there by myself, it was only by invitation. So when I opened the door, there was Jacqueline Kennedy. So that's my, I mean, I made a, 
I had Greek cookies. So I've done a whole dinner with her in this. Uh, so I did with all the all the different celebrities that crossed my path. And if I hadn't cooked for them, in my own imagination, I thought, what would have been seductive for these people? <laughs> so that's what the book is about. And and where be, beyond Barnes and Noble dot com and, and what and, now? Where and can Amazon? And Amazon. And Do you have your own website? Are you a realtor yes. too? I was a realtor. Okay. So, what is your what is your website? Uh, just uh, oh, Teo Pinker. So there's a dot com. Yeah, dot com. But there is a there is a site for this. Uh, it's seducing celebrities one minute at a time on Facebook. Oh. They've, they've started that, and my publisher's from New York. Okay. When you've seduced these celebrities, yes. <laughs> did they request certain menus, or did you create them according to what you felt you wanted to make for them? Well, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, what are you cooking? Because you realize that some people have problems with different foods. Yeah. They have allergies. So now what I, I do is I say to people, so is there anything you don't eat? Because what happens is, you know, you, I remember there was a producer came to my house and I was cooking scallops with capers. He says, I can't eat that. That's going to take me to the hospital. So I said, oh, okay, would you like some smoked salmon? Yeah, I can de deal with that. So I remember having the smoked salmon and putting the olive oil, the capers, and the, and the lemon juice and all that stuff. And he sat it and the whole thing spilled all over his lap. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very seductive. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people, I think, uh, trust my, my cooking. Um, uh, if, if it looks like you're a very good cook. I am. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> We're all coming for dinner. Yeah. He, and he can cook too. Months. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes, you did. I've got a photograph to prove it. In the early days, you, you see, see, this how, is why we got along. You see how memorable you were? <laughs> 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 see? I'm teasing. I'm te so, I don't remember. I love Sagittarians. They give I it to you, then they take I it to Jesus. No. <laughs> I don't remember. Did I yes, really? Yes, I got a picture. Yeah, when I had that That's apartment. Terrible. I don't remember. Yeah, anyway, it was so long ago, it was 30 years ago. Uh, this, this is a monumental moment here. I mean, <laughs> this, this reunion, I, I, it's just amazing. It's fun. And isn't she a glorious singer? She is. I which, thank you for that little segue. <laughs> which, when we come back, Gloria Loring is going to sing oh, for us. Let's talk about my book for a minute. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Do it on the mic. Yeah, do it on your I mic. Will. I will. All right. I will. I'll sing on mic, too. I'll speak on it. There you go. But, yeah. No. And, and I, <coughs> we have some books. Yes. So I had um, a series of coincidences when I was on Days of Our Lives that helped me raise a million dollars for diabetes research after my son was diagnosed with diabetes. And when I was telling the story of the things that came together to help me raise that million dollars, it was the Days of Our Lives Celebrity Cookbooks, Volume 1 and Volume 2. <coughs> and I mentioned, I said, isn't that an extraordinary, extraordinary coincidence? And this fellow who was interviewing me, kind of like a Herbie, said, uh, well, but you know, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. Ha, 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 ha. And I thought, <coughs> it's the coolest thing. And I said, wait a minute, coincidence is what? God's way of what? Remaining anonymous. Coincidence what? I have no idea what that means, but it's very profound sounding. <laughs> well, Albert Einstein said it. Ah. So I started to remember it because I told the story of how I raised the million dollars many, many times because I was still trying to raise more money for diabetes research and my son and all of that. And by the way, he's had 36 <coughs> six and a half years and he's doing okay. So thank you. Thank you, God. Anyway, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so far. But I kept repeating, coincidence is God's way. And then I started, you know how when you repeat something like, oh, just my luck, you see everything from that framework. Mm -hmm. But if you say, today's going to be a great day, you start looking for the great things to, to reinforce what you already believe. And so I had this new belief system called coincidence is that connecting principle of goodness in the world. And it was this little phrase by Albert Einstein. And I started to see things that were connecting in my life. And then I had some extraordinary things. There were the letters from Lincoln, Nebraska. That's chapter three in this. That's uh, just profoundly amazing. It's jaw-dropping. And so what happened is through the years, these stories started to mount up. And I realized that there was this continuum going on. And I decided that I had to sit down and write it. And even then, it took me 10 years <laughs> from the time I first started it, because I kept putting it aside. And I thought, who's going to want to read a book by Gloria Loring with the word God in the title? You know, I'm not a theologian, I'm not a this. But I read a lot of, um, I was, I'm a certified yoga instructor. I used a lot of yoga philosophy. I studied other religions. 
I studied um, the Kabbalah. I studied quantum physics. Oh my God, is that hard? <laughs> I, you know, I, I tried <coughs> to find where are the the same ideas that keep appearing again and again, sort of perennial philosophy, and I wound them all together up um, in this book. And the nice thing is that it was such a joy to write and to finish. And I've had people say that it's changed their lives. It's changed the way they look at their lives, at what comes into their lives. And most of all, what I try to do is, is let people know how you can use the things that come in, even the tough stuff, for good. Because when something difficult comes into your life, you can say, what is this asking of me? Not how is this torturing me, which you can also do, but that's, you know, why am I suffering like that? There's no answer. You'll just suffer more. But you can say, wait a minute, what is this asking of me? I just lost someone I love. I just lost a job I thought I had to have. I just um, turned a corner in such and such. What is this asking of me? And what that does is it shifts our lives our lives from being just one foot in front of the other to being an adventure, to constantly watching for the way we are connected to what might do us good in some unknown way if we'll look, just look deeper under its appearance. So that's what this is, book is about and it's really fun and every chapter has a song that I wrote that goes with that chapter and that's on a CD called Turn the Page. They're on my website but this they have here tonight. They have a few copies here. And then um, you want me to sing, right? Yeah, well, we when we come back. When we come back. I don't know where we're going, but still. <laughs> <laughs>